Today's tinkerage is accompanied by a Red Planet Rocketeer Red Ale from Dastardly Villain Brewing, who declare themselves to be the makers of beer-flavored beer. Hidden among the steampunk-themed description on the back of the can, they uh, they describe this beer as a malt-focused beer with hints of toffee, caramel up front, and balanced with a roasty dryness and grainy, biscuity character in the finish. Well, that's nice, but that's not the main event. The main event tonight is checking out these PCF85748 channel MUX chips that I got in a recent mailbag. These are, as the description suggests, an I squared C interface chip that gives you eight uh, digital in out ports, which can be used to expand the number of digital IO you have on your microcontroller. And as far as I can tell, they should be able to communicate with pretty much any type of microcontroller, as long as you got a library for it, and Arduino has a library, uh, so does MicroPython, a couple of them actually. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, just getting my feet wet, experimenting just a little bit to see how easy it is to make these things get up and dance. Might as well start with the data sheet just to see what we've got here. As we already know from the description I mentioned earlier, it's an input input output expander uh, that communicates over a two wire I squared C bus. Runs anywhere from two and a half to six volts, so you can run it directly off the 3.3 volts of the ESP uh, type chips or off the five volts of the Arduino style chips. Cool. There is the basic block diagram. We have three address lines for a total of eight addresses. So if you load up the I squared C bus, you can have 64 uh, digital IOs available to, uh, to play with. One thing to note is this thing, uh, sinks current on the load side. It doesn't source current, which means you have to have your load between the pin and, uh, VCC, and you can do up to 50 milliamps per pin. You cannot use this thing to supply voltage, so if you want to connect your load to ground in a pin, it's not going to work. It's not going to be able to supply that, so you need to uh, have positive as your common on your load side. That's the one big gotcha on this chip, and it's not a huge deal, but you just have to keep it in mind. But you can drive 50 milliamps, so that's a few LEDs or a few opto-isolators or a ridiculous amount of transistors. And there it's just reminding you of that again. Your load needs to be between the pin and VCC, not to ground. So there's a pinout and block diagram of the whole thing. The IO is on pins 4 through 12. Uh, VCC is on 16 and ground is on 8. It's a 16-pin dip chip. There is an interrupt output if you choose to use it. And a few of the example sketches use it, but... I don't know that I'm going to play with that. I'm just going to use it without having to worry about uh, thinking about interrupt handling and all that. Uh, anyway, there is the three address lines. There is the serial clock and serial data of the I squared C. And here is what goes on inside it. Basically just control logic and a shift register going to the IO. Pretty straightforward. I don't know if we need to go through the rest of the 45 pages of this uh, data sheet. I can link you to it if you really care to. So here is just a fairly basic circuit on, on the breadboard. There's the chip there. I've got power and ground. Um, I've got the SCL and SDA pins on uh, 14 and 15 there. These three are address pins. I've just got them all pulled low, and that gives me a base address um, of 20 or 20. Um, I guess it's 20 hex. And if I uh, send them all high, that will give me, what, 27, I guess, for a total of eight addresses. But I'm just going to stick with uh, all low. I'm not sure if they have pull ups or pull downs internally, but I'm just going to force them so that I know what it is. And then I've got one lonely GPIO connected to an LED. Uh, that LED through a resistor to the positive rail, to VCC. And using an example from the Adafruit library. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, there are a few libraries for this, but I grabbed the Adafruit one just because it has the cleanest examples to play with. 
we have the include for the library, we have the library call and define an object called PCF. Could have called it anything, but that's what it is. Um, this is just some niceties, which is actually useful for troubleshooting, especially this part right here, um, because it will show you on the serial console if your I squared C isn't connected right, or if the chip's not talking or something like that. So that's cool. Um, we set uh, pin seven to an output, just like standard GPIO stuff in Arduino, and then the loop quickly blinks it. That's all there is to this sketch. And when we power it up, the LED starts blinking as you would expect it to. Not very exciting, but that proves that I've got the wiring connected right and everything is, uh, is working just happily. Let me expand this just a little bit. So here is basically that same sketch, only copy paste expanded a whole bunch with a twist put into it. So first of all, we have uh, seven of the eight pins set to output now, and we have pin zero set as an input with a pull-up resistor. So I am going to connect a switch to that and well, let's see what happens here. If the digital read of zero, which is the switch, equals zero, i.e. a low, um, which is not pulled up anymore, then we will run through and blink all seven of the LEDs. And then come back up here and just wait for this to go to zero again. Here is that wired up. Uh, pin zero goes to this little pushy button here, and the rest of them go to seven LEDs, with the resistors all going to the high rail. Just like I promised it would. Which amazes me as much as anyone because, well, programming ain't my forte. I'm sure you've heard that before if you've been hanging around this channel long enough. So that's basic Arduino with it. Let's try uh, PyPico and see how that works. Because that will be using MicroPython. And as it turns out for the Pi Pico, well, for actually any MicroPython device, so any of the ESP boards as well, um, there are a couple of libraries available for this 8-bit uh, I2C expander. This particular one seems to be the easier one to deal with, or at least it's the one that I found the easier to deal with. Your mileage may vary. Anyway, I found a bunch of examples for it online. That's probably what made it the easiest. So that's the library, and as you can see on my Pi Pico, I've got it already connected or already uploaded. And then this main comes from a few examples that I found online and then my bodgery. Um, so we import the library, we import I squared C and pin from machine, we import time um, just to get it all set up. We define the I squared C on I squared C number zero. So on the Pi Pico and you know any uh, RP2040 device, there are multiple places where you can pick up the I squared C bus. I chose to use the one that's on pins 11 and 12, and that's what the example used. So just to make it easy on myself. So then we define up the PCF object that will reference further down in there. Um, tell it that it's I squared C and that its address is hex two zero. And again, I'm just going to use the base address of the thing because that makes it easier. Anyway, so uh, here is the basic loop, the while loop, uh, that is a MicroPython thing. Um, it seems, this library seems to address it just as a uh, an 8-bit bit, uh, bit mask or port. So by setting the output ports to FF, that is basically a binary 1111 one, um, It goes to sleep for half a second and then it sets the port. Oh, and then it prints just on the monitor down here, the port. Um, and then it sets the port to zero, zero. So that's all eight zeros. And then it does a few different patterns and turns them on and off and goes to sleep. So then we come down to the part that I wrote, which is basically just copy, paste, and changing. Uh, this one has a uh, one dark chase, so seven lit and one dark. So I'm turning off uh, bit one, then bit two, then 
um, the fours place, which is the third bit over, and then the eights place, which is the fourth bit over in binary, right? And then one zero two zero four zero and eight zero, so that chases across. And then I do it the other way around with most of them dark and only one lit. And if you go and look up these hexadecimal values in binary, you'll see what's going on. But basically, it's a bunch of ones with a single zero in it. Remember, we're pulling the port low to turn on the LEDs. So that's what's going on here. That's why it seems a little backwards. But anyway, this chase is through. Well, we'll just look at it. You'll see. So here it is set up on the breadboard just as it powered up. Now I tell Thawney to run. Here we go. Chase, chase, chase. That's the first chase that I wrote. There is the second chase that I wrote. And then we'll go back to the two that came with the example. That alternating blink. And away we go again. And it just does that forever. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, oh yeah, the other thing that's happening on this. Let me just go into the, the monitor. Up in this first little bit, it is printing out to the monitor down here what the value it's reading in the port is. And that's what's going on down here. It's only doing it for this first handful. You can see them changing as it runs that part of the script. So after I write uh, FF, it reads it back and that's the 255. Then I write zero and it comes up with zero. Then I write AA, which is uh, decimal 170. And then it writes 55, which is decimal 85. So if I wanted to read inputs instead of, uh, instead of setting outputs, I would just have to uh, reference that in my if statement or my read statement, or whatever I wanted to use, and do the math to figure out what the binary bits are. Relatively straightforward, a little bit more math heavy. There's probably easier ways to do it, but this seemed fairly intuitive to me when I found that library. And just for fun, I soldered up some pins on one of these smaller RP2040s that I got in a mailbag a few weeks ago. Let's just quickly connect him up and I've dropped that same uh, piece of code onto there as I had running on the PyPico. So let's just see what happens here. Well, there we go. As expected, it's doing exactly what the program is telling it to do. Cool. So these little Pi uh, RP2040 boards do a pretty good job in a tiny little form factor. Although I don't mind this with this breakout board either. Good to have options. And of course you could use that same MicroPython uh, setup on any of the ESP boards, uh, right up to ESP32. As an example, I compiled it for Unexpected Maker's Tiny Pico, and it came out just fine. So it should work on any of the ESP32s for uh, using the Arduino libraries as well, if you prefer that over MicroPython. All in all, a fairly competent little chip, um, and I think one that will come in useful in the future, especially having a bunch of them. Can you imagine having 64 extra GPOs hanging off uh, a board? I think that could be really useful. Anyway, um, let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Uh, have you played with this uh, chip before? Um, is there a better 8-bit uh, GPIO expander for cheap that's available out there that I don't know about yet? Let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.